Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry Major 2020 Paper 42 Question 4 Oxygen is produced by the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Manganese 4 oxide is the catalyst for this reaction. Part A What is meant by the term catalyst? I think this question comes out every single year. Make sure you know the answer for this. It's the substance that speeds up the reaction by lowering the activation energy and it's not used up. Part B. A student measures the volume of oxygen produced at regular time intervals using the apparatus shown. Large lumps of manganese 4 oxide are used. The catalyst is placed here. This is the aqueous hydrogen peroxide and they said that the decomposition of this substance produces oxygen, so that's why they put a gas syringe here to measure the volume of oxygen produced. A graph of the results is shown. It's the volume of oxygen produced against the time. What happens to the rate of this reaction as time increases? In your answer, explain why the rate changes in this way. Alright, pay attention that they asked for the rate, and in this graph, the rate is not given. So you need to find the rate from this graph. And how do you find the rate from this kind of graphs? The rate is the gradient of the curve. Well, because you can see that the volume of oxygen produced has increased over time, you may think that the rate is increasing as well. But no, you have to pay attention to the gradient. The gradient started something like this. And then in the end, it became like this and horizontal. This shows that gradient has decreased over time, meaning that the rate has decreased over time. So as the time increases, the rate of this reaction decreases. Now we have to explain why the rate changes in this way. The reason behind this is pretty simple. It's because you're using up the reactants. The reactant is hydrogen peroxide in this case, Keep in mind that this is just a catalyst, it has nothing to do with the amount of reactants left. As the reaction proceeds, there will be less particles present per unit volume because they're being used up. And as a result, there will be fewer collisions per unit time. This is why the gradient of this graph is slowly decreasing. And in the end, the reaction stops completely because all hydrogen peroxide is used up. Part C. The experiment is repeated using the same mass of manganese 4 oxide. Powdered manganese 4 oxide is used instead of using large lumps. All other conditions stay the same. Sketch a graph on the axis in part B to show how the volume of oxygen changes with time. What difference does it make if you use powdered ones instead of large lumps? It's the surface area that is changed. If they use powdered manganese for oxide, the surface area will be much larger. And what happens to the rate of reaction if the surface area is increased? The rate of reaction is increased as well. So we can show it by drawing a graph with a steeper gradient like this. Okay, then the next part of the graph, there is one important point to this. The maximum volume of oxygen produced should be equal to the initial graph like this. So it's just that this second graph has reached the volume of oxygen produced in a shorter period of time and it's not going to affect the volume of oxygen produced. Part D, in terms of particles, explain what happens to the rate of this reaction when the temperature is increased. When they mention the phrase in terms of particles, you have to talk about the kinetic particle theory. So when the temperature is increased, the first thing you talk about is the particles gain kinetic energy. As a result, there will be greater number of collisions with activation energy or more. This means that there will be more number of particles that can cause the reaction to occur. Finally, there will be more collisions that are successful and the rate of reaction will increase. This question is also very common in chemistry paper 4, so make sure you memorize this whole thing. 
Part E, the equation for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is shown. 2H2O2 becomes 2H2O and O2. 25 cm cube of aqueous hydrogen peroxide forms 48 cm cube of oxygen at room temperature and pressure. Calculate the concentration of aqueous hydrogen peroxide at the start of the experiment using the following steps. So it's good that they are giving you these steps. You don't have to think of your own method to find the concentration, but just follow the steps. Calculate the number of moles of oxygen formed. In this question, we're given with volume of aqueous hydrogen peroxide and volume of oxygen, and oxygen is a gas. So to find the number of moles, we have to use the formula number of moles equals to volume divided by 24. This can only be used for volumes of gases in room temperature and pressure. Well, the volume was 48.0 cm cube. Another important thing to remember is that we never use cm cube in our calculations of mole. We always need to change it to dm cube, and we do that by dividing it by 1000. So instead of using 48 cm cube, we're gonna use 48 divided by 1000, which is 0 0.048. So 0 0.048 divided by 24, it's 0 0.002. Deduce the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide that decomposed. Hydrogen peroxide is this, and we know the number of moles of oxygen. Well, we can easily find it by comparing the ratio. The ratio of hydrogen peroxide to oxygen is, well, you can see the number 2 in front, and there's no number here. It means there's just one. So the ratio is 2 is to 1. The number of moles of oxygen was 0 0.002. So for hydrogen peroxide, you just have to multiply it by 2. And the answer is 0 0.004. Calculate the concentration of hydrogen peroxide in mole per dm cube. To find the concentration of a liquid, we need to use this formula. Concentration equals to number of moles divided by volume. We found the number of moles and the volume is given here, 25 cm cube. And again, we never use cm cube, we have to convert it to dm cube. So 25 divided by 1000, it's 0 0.025. So 0 0.004 divided by 0 0.025 equals to 0.16 mole per dm cube. Part F. Oxygen can also be produced by the decomposition of potassium chloride 5 KClO3. The only products of this decomposition are potassium chloride and oxygen. Write a chemical equation for this decomposition. It's not very hard, you just have to convert the word equation into the chemical equation. So it started with KClO3, then produced potassium chloride. So potassium is K and chloride is Cl, while the ions are K plus and Cl minus because potassium is in group 1 and chloride is in group 7. You can find this from your periodic table. The compound is KCl and oxygen, so O2. The next step is to, of course, balance it while K and Cl look fine, but for oxygen atoms, we have 3 here and 2 here. Let's multiply them to make it 6 on each side. So multiply 2 here and 3 here, so now both sides have 6 oxygen atoms, but the number of potassium atoms and chloride atoms have doubled, so we just put 2 in front here to balance that, and it's done. Question 5. Electrolysis of concentrated aqueous sodium chloride using inert electrodes forms chlorine, hydrogen, and sodium hydroxide. Part A. What is meant by the term electrolysis? Okay, this paper is a good paper because all the common questions are in this paper. I hope you know this. Electrolysis is the breakdown of an ionic compound when molten or in aqueous solution using electricity. Part B. Name a substance that can be used as inert electrodes. There are two types. One is platinum and the other one is graphite. You can just write one of these. 
Part C, write an ionic half equation for the formation of hydrogen during the electrolysis. The half equation of hydrogen is basically fixed in the product side. You'll have hydrogen gas produced, while the ion will be hydrogen ion, H+. But you know that there are two hydrogen atoms here, so you should put two in front of H+, to balance it. And since the charge here is plus two, you need two electrons to make it minus two. Part D, give the formulae of the four ions present in the concentrated aqueous sodium chloride. The two obvious ones are Na plus and Cl minus. And where are the other two? It's over here in aqueous. So if it's aqueous, it's in water, so H2O. And the two ions in water are H plus and OH minus. So there you go, you have your four ions. Part A explain how sodium hydroxide is formed during this electrolysis. To form sodium hydroxide, you will need Na plus and OH minus. And how did you get this too? It's because the other two ions, which are H plus ions and Cl minus ions, have been discharged, and the only remaining ions are Na plus and OH minus. You can notice because in the beginning of the question, they said that it forms chlorine, hydrogen, and sodium hydroxide. These gases mean they have been discharged. Question 6, Part A. Propane reacts with chlorine in the photochemical reaction as shown. What type of reaction is this? You can see that one of the chloride ions has moved here, and the hydrogen ion has been moved here. So it has replaced the hydrogen ion, and it's called the substitution reaction. What condition is needed for this photochemical reaction to occur? Alright, the word photo in front here means light. So remember, you need ultraviolet light or ultraviolet radiation for this reaction to occur. Draw two structure isomers of compounds with the formula C3H7Cl. Show all of the atoms and all of the bonds. That shouldn't be very hard, so first put three C's in the middle, and the rest fill up with 7H atoms and 1Cl atoms. So I'll put 1Cl at the end, and the rest as H. Then to make it different in the second one, let's put chloride atom in the middle here, then the rest just hydrogen atoms. Part B. Propene reacts with chlorine in an addition reaction as shown. State why this is an addition reaction. You can literally say it's because two molecules join together to make one molecule. Or you can say that it's because there's only one product here. And another answer can be that, you know that C3H6, it's an alkene. It has C double C bond. But if it becomes C3H6Cl2, the C double C bond will be broken and just become C single bond. Therefore, you can say the double bond becomes single bond. The structures of the reactants and products of this reaction are shown. Some bond energies are shown in the table. Calculate the energy change for the reaction between propene and chlorine using the following steps. Calculate the energy needed to break the bonds. Okay, you might think that you have to calculate the energy needed to break all the bonds here, but no, we don't have to break every single bond here. And in fact, you can only break these two bonds. The reason because we're just gonna add two Cl atoms over here and we don't need to change the whole formation. So add 612 with 242. 854 kilojoules. Calculate the energy released when bonds are formed. This time it's when it's formed, so we need to find it from the product side. We have broken this bond and this bond. So the new bonds that are formed are over here, and also these two CCL bonds. So one CC bond and two CCL bonds, which are 
347 plus 2 times 339. Calculate the energy change for the reaction between propane and chlorine. To find the energy change, subtract the energy released when bonds are formed from the energy needed to break the bonds. 854 minus 1025 equals to negative 171. Or you can just memorize that when you want to break the bonds, the energy is in positive, but when you want to form the bonds, the energy is in negative. Part C. There are three functional groups in compound A. Name the homologous series of the compounds that contain the following structures. C double bond C, it's an alkene. OH, it's an alcohol. Then COOH, it's carboxylic acid. What would you observe when compound A is added to aqueous bromine? Bromine turns colorless from brown when alkene is present. Since we have alkene here, it will turn colorless. When aqueous sodium carbonate is added, Sodium carbonate is an example of a metal carbonate. Well, if you add metal carbonate to carboxylic acids, CO2 gas will be produced. But instead of writing carbon dioxide gas produced, you just need to write what you observe. So write that there are bubbles produced, or there is fizzing, or there is effervescence. Part D. Compound A can be used as a single monomer to produce two different polymers. Draw one repeat unit of the addition polymer formed from compound A. When you want to form an addition polymer, you have to break the double bond over here and make it single bond and put these two extension bonds. The rest will stay the same. What type of condensation polymer is formed from compound A? Now they're talking about condensation polymer, it's not this one. Well, there are two types of condensation polymer. One is polyamide, which is nylon, and the other one is polyester, which is terylene. To form a polyamide, you will need one compound with NH2 group at each end and another compound with COCl group at each end. Only then you can form the amide linkage where its name comes from. However, we don't have neither of these two groups. So let's see what we need for polyester. For polyester, we need one compound with carboxylic acids at each end and another compound with alcohol group at each end. While although this compound does not have two COH groups or two OH groups, it has one COH and one OH here, so it can still form polyester. So the answer is polyester. That's it for this video. If you want to support me, please like and comment to tell me what you think about this paper. Subscribe to get ready for your IGCSE exams. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and God bless you guys. Bye!